Hello, welcome to Victory Auto Group. We are a dealer in Stewart, Florida on Monterey Road. We've been open for 13 years uh, or the, since 2011. And it's been a great experience uh, for me opening that dealership. It's, it's been a dream of mine. And, and, uh, and this is Billy. We, we, uh, we, uh, we both uh, uh, work there. And, uh, and today we're gonna share about the experiences uh, or things to watch out for when you're buying a car. So that's one of the most difficult things to do is buy buying a used car. A lot of people don't buy a lot of cars in their lives, used cars in their lives. Some people have one car every 10 years. So if you you know buy five or six cars, you don't five or six cars in your lifetime, uh, you're, you're not going to really have an experience or knowledge to buy the right used car. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And Billy is... And so in referencing this subject, I guess we're going to call this uh, like a buyer awareness type situation. Yeah. Um, so, so like what, what do you... Like when people come in t for uh, to us to buy a used car, sometimes people... Uh, and I think it's a great idea, and I recommend it. Is they say, "Well, can I take it to a mechanic?" Absolutely. And that and that is one Absolutely. thing that yeah, that's um, that's a must, I think. Uh, you know, just a simple situational awareness um, as far as vehicles. You know, when you get in the car, you want to get in the car and feel it out. You want to, you know, make sure you're comfortable in the car first. You know, go ahead and adjust your mirrors, uh, pop the hood. You know, due diligence, check your Check your fluids, make sure everything, you know, just looks the part. Yeah. That's that's a lot of times, you know, you want to see that things just look maintained, you know, overall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I agree with you. A lot of times, because I, I do the sales part and you're, you're the, you do the mechanic yes, sir. part. I, uh, when I, when I'm selling, I always look at the person. How do they fit in the car? Exactly. How do they feel in the car? How do they even look? together the car are you gonna love the car tomorrow yeah and how and, and also it's how, like how they fit so when you go look at the car you like i, I agree with you you get in it see how you feel like, well you wouldn't feel, sell a guy like me a miata yeah you're not gonna feel too I'm, good in the i'm miata. gonna i'm gonna yeah. come back and say you know what maybe i should have got that bigger car yeah so, so that <laughs> That is the point, you know, you're, you're not going to, I mean, of course you could buy a Miata, but you're, you know, you're not going to be very comfortable. Well, and then again, you know, that's, that's, that's funny. That's, I, it was my personal preference. Yeah. And it's ironically, I saw this tall guy, he's like six foot five and I saw him walking by. And then a few minutes later, I walked by a Miata and he's in there all like crunched over. Yeah. Like, and then you see him driving down the road up, and their yeah. head's like yeah, over the up. windshield. What is that guy doing in that little yeah. car? So. All right, well, back to the original part of um, our topic. So buyer awareness starts first with me. Obviously, me as a buyer, I need to be aware of, you know, first, you know, what, what I'm looking for, right. what, what I'm expecting to do with this vehicle, and my expectations as to, uh, you know, my, my preferences, but most importantly, what actually is going to satisfy my needs. Right. Secondly, I want to, like I said, you know, just check everything out, make sure everything feels comfy, pop the hood, look it over, and then comes the test drive. So you want to start off with how we go about the test drive? Or? Well, we usually go uh, around a certain area, always the same area. So uh, it's a controlled somewhat controlled area and and when you're test driving the vehicle things to look for is you listen for noises yeah you you when you're driving you you feel how the transmission how it shifts how it drives if you how feel, that exhaust note sounds yeah the exhaust i love the yeah. exhaust. a lot of people want to check out how that radio sounds too the radio and then i always whenever i test drive a car uh, i always have to floor it i don't know if it's a good idea but it's what i do I get really get a good sense for the car when I floor it. I feel the acceleration. I hear yep. the shift points. I hear nice the, and clean. the noise. I feel if it has power if, and if it has, uh, like, it, sometimes when uh, cars are older or not older, when they've been abused, they don't have the power. They feel like you just floor it. You get and, a little shimmy or a thump. And, and the engine, you don't feel the umph in the engine. You, yep. don't, you don't feel, it just doesn't feel right. So... 
I do those things. And then also when I go on test drive, sometimes I'm talking to people and I always say, well, you know what? I'm not going to talk. Let's just listen to the car. You exactly. focus on the driving experience, feel the steering wheel, alignment. Um, so what do you alignment think? meaning that it's not pulling to the left or to the right. Um, when you're braking, it's steering ahead properly. Um, and that gives you a good sense of the car too. You know, when you're doing that stop and go, you can feel the brakes that they're working properly. Yeah. Also, when you're accelerating, even though you wouldn't accelerate hard every day, you could feel out, you know, hey, does this thing feel tight? Does do the motor mounts feel good? Is it does it have a slight misfire? Does it have any weird noises? That's all good information. Me personally, I like to make sure my air conditioner works. You know, test out the vent systems, uh, you know, just overall look at the vehicle, make sure, you know, stupid things that you may or may not be aware of, you know, uh, what's in the glove box, you know, um, do I like where the cup holders are? Sometimes yeah. that matters. A yeah. Lot and then also along the note, uh, line, open all the windows, open the windows, play with all the radio, the volume here, there's blown speakers, yep. play with the power seat, the seats, and mm -hmm. all the functions. Because we know for a fact that oh, wait, a if, lot. if grandpa sat in this car for five years and never moved it, it might not move. It might not move. That's something we might have to work out. And we do. Nine times out of ten, you know, if it's something like a, a back window. We see it all the time. Back windows are never used. So they get stuck. You know, sometimes it's a simple, you know, give it the old fonts. So, and, then, yeah. and uh, you know, we're good to go. And other times, you know, we're replacing parts. But that's what's good about you is that you employ uh, mechanics such as myself that go through these vehicles. We, we go through the proper inspections. We check lights windshield wipers, brakes, tires. How many tires do we buy a month? I have no idea. I can't really count. It's a lot. It's a lot. Because we have to take the tires to the dump. And, and, and the batteries. And the batteries and the tires and uh, all kinds of parts. It's so really you could say that buyer awareness really starts in our part because we have to be aware of what we've bought and we're reselling as well right. would you say that's an accurate statement yeah i would i think it, it depends on us obviously uh, uh we don't sell all the used cars in the world so we can't we can't be responsible for everyone but so that's where buyer awareness is important so you got to be who so when you go somewhere else you or anywhere you always need to be looking at these things that we're discussing <laughs> And I've noticed uh, in working with you that you're a very aware person. Um, you know, uh, when you're buying these vehicles, I know that you know what to look for. But uh, what are some telltales that you can relate to people that they may not be aware of? Yeah, that's a good question, Billy. Because I have to, I go to auctions and I have to buy these cars within a minute sometimes exactly i have to do a, I, I decide so in I, that minute yeah, what are one you looking minute at? first things i look at i do a walk around a complete walk around i look at the paint and different angles and I look at reflections and so i can see any issues with the paint and irregularities and then i also look a habit is always looking at tires i always stick my hand at and i don't only look at but i also feel the tread i I, yeah, I know I, you got that app on your phone that no, lets yeah, you and know. Then, and then also on every vehicle, I check a Carfax. So those are the th main things I look f look at. Carfax, paint. I walk around because sometimes the Carfax is not accurate. Mm -hmm. Carfax is simply a guide. A lot of accidents or things mm -hmm. that may be happening in this car are not in the Carfax. But it's a guide to the puzzle. So you look at the car, you look at the Carfax, you look at the paint. And then also look at the interior, smell try to yes. smell the interior i look quickly i glance at the dashboard for any check engine lights uh and check put my hand on the ac and headliner i glance how's the headliner kind of do a well i noticed one of the things you haven't said but you <coughs> re re relate this heavily on others is that blow by when it comes to taking off that oil cap while it's running and making sure that you know, there's no uh, evidence of engine damage and things of that nature. I know you do that as well. Yeah, I do that with diesels. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a lot of times at the auction, sometimes I, I don't have 
sometimes I don't have time to check or I didn't have a chance to check that beforehand. But if I ever buy a diesel, I'm always looking at blue buy. Well, but and then we, again, we're talking about buyer awareness. Uh, once again, this is a situational to you purchasing a vehicle. Uh, whereas, you know, we're trying to inform people how to buy a retail vehicle, but it applies. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Uh, our, our first minute, and then obviously you employ people like myself to go further than that. You know, sometimes we spend a day or so with the vehicle, you know, Hey, I noticed that, uh, when I was driving it or when I was, was checking it out, it was making this noise, please check it. And, um, a lot of the times, uh, you know, if a vehicle, um, is beyond what we would consider to be reasonable, you will deny it. You won't even resell it. Right. Yeah. Because at the auction, I can, I, I buy them with the green light. So if there's things that we, uh, the auction missed and I missed, we get the vehicle, I can send the vehicle back. So we have a guarantee on our yeah, end as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk for a second also about, um, you know, when we sell a vehicle, uh, you know, we offer a warranty as well. We always offer that aftermarket yeah, warranties. W yeah, we offer the warranty. So whenever the a person, when we sell a vehicle, we want the person to have success with the vehicle. Whether it, more importantly, I focus on financing we, because they're making payments. Yep. I want them to have a warranty as well. Uh, I want to set them up for success, but it's very important to have a warranty because when you buy a brand new car, you get a warranty. Absolutely. I think it's doubly more important when you buy a used car, it's detrimental that you get a, uh, you get a warranty. Absolutely. There's so many moving parts in these cars and each car is different. You and need, we know this. And who knows how the car was owned or maintained yeah. before. We can guess. We can... But that's why you need the warranty. Yeah, and we, we see it several times, you know, that people come in and they're like, you know what? This warranty, it saved my butt. My, my transmission went out or whatever the case may be. And they come back and they thank us. Yeah. Even though it, it may seem like something that was offsetting at first, it really, it, it turns out to be a blessing in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah, at first people don't want to pay or, oh, I, I'm just buying this car and then I have this extra expense. But then you're able to offer that in their financing. So it's, it, it equals about what, $5 more a month? No, on, on average, uh, 15, 15 to about 15 bucks. 20 bucks. In, but yeah. what could you really buy for 15 bucks? You can't get a, you buy, like, a like, air filter. You get two coffees, bucks. maybe. Two, two coffees. Yeah. Uh, that's two days worth yeah. of coffee for a guaranteed uh, set amount of time that yeah. your vehicle is under warranty. This, uh, we just sold uh, well, a while back. We sold a van and unfortunately unfor and unfortunately, if, well, unfortunately the in transmission went, mm -hmm. so the warranty covered it. About six months or a year later, the engine went, the warranty covered the engine. So the guy paid like $1,500 total cost of the warranty approximately but he got a transmission an engine and he's still driving it was a commercial vehicle it's a commercial vehicle i remember that one because yeah. um it was a big to do but uh how grateful is that guy the guy is grateful and he, super super grateful yeah. and the fact that you can even warranty a vehicle that you're going to take out and you're going to go run it on these streets and highways in this traffic and and a commercial vehicle and in a, a commercially gets more licensed vehicle that's that's really unheard of because you think about commercial you know a lot of uh places won't even finance a vehicle that is commercially used and we not only are we financing these vehicles we're covering the the driver yeah because you know um if you own a company that did cable service obviously you're going to have employees driving these vehicles, similar to um, our friend that has the pool company, you know, he's got to put his faith in the driver itself. You never know. Yeah. Uh, somebody may have an offsetting day and, and roughhouse the vehicle, you know, and next thing you know, the boss is getting a phone call and broke down. Hey, good news. I've got a warranty. Uh, towing covered, repairs covered, sometimes even a rental car covered. And why? Because we took the time to uh, express to them the, the nature of, of uh, a warranty, you know? So that's all good information right there. It's, you know. Yeah, so so the main thing is, is it, the process begins with me buying the vehicle. Yes, sir. I try to do the best I can. Of course, sometimes I make mistakes, but there's a ways out uh, where we can return the car. 
And then also we do go over the cars and we do fix them. Second thing, the customer comes in, likes the car. The customer takes the car uh, to a mechanic for a second opinion. Highly recommend that. The customer also loves their car, it fits their purpose, their needs, and everything that they need, whether it's for their family or they have a large family or they like road trips or it's for commercial or it's for work. Mm -hmm. Whatever the scenario is, we have a car for every, everyone from classic cars from the 50s to jeeps to trucks to commercial to sports cars you name it we have it because every person is different we have a car for every person and and then and then uh cars are fun too so some people want a toy a jeep absolutely you know, or, or big monster truck or so, uh turbo mustang turbo mustang uh raptor trucks yeah the nightmares, nightmares remember we've yeah. got a bunch of those yeah, we've, um, uh, i have a race truck we have a race truck right now. yep yep uh, yep Pro Street race trucks, whatever your imagination can think of, we we usually have it. And don't we even have a couple of campers uh, right now currently campers. on the lot? And we have a food truck, a camper, yep. a bread truck. You know, so you just come in and it's like a car ex a museum. Extravagant, a uh, yeah. So and and uh, so those are the things to look for, and then each car. Uh, which would be another video, but we can briefly, I think, talk about it. Each car has, it's like a wine, you know, because, like, I make that analogy, because some wines are amazing and some wines are not. So these cars are also, like, a Chevy has good years and bad years. Absolutely. A Ford has good years and bad years, and each one has good models and bad models. Yeah. So one thing to uh, be aware of or maybe do a little research before you go buy the car is, is this is the good model or bad model do a little research online like yeah. you google it what are the issues with a particular car that you're looking at like uh read like an edmunds review yeah well you, i mean it's pretty easy you just go on google is what are the issues with this car mm -hmm. and it'll and it'll list give you a list of all the top issues yeah and that gives you also insight when you go to look at the car that'll give you insight to what to look for while you're even looking at the car and then if you notice there's so many issues maybe that's a not, not a car to buy maybe it's a car to, to avoid so uh that is uh, for me something that i'm aware of and and, and you're yes sir we can talk all day about all these different and we will and we will it, i want it's, to it's coming i think that would be a great video um so back to uh my part uh being the mechanic one of your mechanics grateful glad to work for you um like i said you know the first thing we do when we get them in the lot uh we always go through and check the brakes the tires the lights um say i come to you with an issue uh, you give me the green light, um, you know, and I find something else. We we take care of that stuff. You know, we try to put out the best product we can. Um, but then again, it's uh, there's always that little something, um, which is the part of this movie. We're trying to, you know, show you guys the do's and don'ts. Um, for me, I don't know what, like, I'm thinking like what would you consider like an absolute deal breaker when it comes to, to get to buying a car like what is something you would see in a car that would absolutely be like nope not buying this car well when i first started the dealership and started buying cars i didn't really have an understanding of it but now i i when i see a car i look at the condition the overall condition and if i and if i see the overall condition of the car and it's nice and clean it's worth buying. Yeah. If the car looks like garbage, beat up, abused uh, visually, no matter what the value of the car, if somebody didn't take care of the car and the car looks like garbage, it's worth, it's not worth whatever the value is said, is said it's worth. So I try to avoid, uh, now I, when I see a car that looks like it's been ab abused, I try to avoid those cars. I, I like so you're, you're speaking on maintenance. And maintenance is such an important factor today, especially um, when you have these vehicles that use uh, zero 15 and zero 20 oils and synthetics and non-synthetics. And uh, 
that goes back to our, our original statement too with the Carfax because a lot of that maintenance history that is we're looking there. at is right there. It's documented as proof that, you know, someone loved the vehicle enough to at least take it, you know, every 5,000 or so to, to get at least an oil change, you know. Yeah. What, what are the, Billy, what are the most important things in maintenance? Like sometimes with, some, now, like before when I started driving, when I was a, a teenager, I was told 3,000 miles, every 3,000 miles, you've got to get an oil change. Now I hear on some cars, 10,000 miles. Some cars, 5,000 miles. Some with seven. And, and, and I don't I don't get it. Like, can you tell, uh, like, okay, expand well, on that? Or what, what's the real? So the real deal, okay, you want to look at condition. You want to look that your engine oil is not black. It doesn't smell like raw fuel. And secondly, that it's just full to the mark. You know, um... If, if I were to be looking at a car and it's upper in mileage, you know, I would maybe look at things like, the, you know, what does the exhaust look like? Does it have, you know, some smuts on the bumper, you know, things of that nature. Also, um, you want to make sure you're using the proper gas. Uh, a lot of times, like your Mercedes and uh, things of that nature will require uh, premium gasoline. A lot of people neglect that because, you know, it's a couple of dollars more at the pump. But we've seen time and time again where just by switching from a regular gasoline Huge to improvement. premium gasoline and driving these vehicles. I mean, how many times have we, have I told you just, hey man, go take it on the highway Clear and it drive out. it. Clear. Just, just drive it because these vehicles, you know, they, if they sit for longer than a month, especially with today's, uh, ethanol enriched gasoline that starts to turn you know it starts to feel not quite where it should be you know um back to your original question um which was oh what do you recommend how often should you change oil okay so changing oil as often as the manufacturer would recommend as long as it's full and it's not leaking that's primary um, a lot of different manufacturers will say that mileage is further, kind of as like a, a almost like a sales pitch. I want to say, I mean, really, I want to see no more than five thousand miles in a oil change, uh, transmission things of that nature, sixty thousand for replacing those fluids. Uh, other services that people sometimes neglect, it would be like a front differential on a 4x4, rear differential, those fluids need to be changed, especially if you um, are driving in wet conditions, you know, things of that nature. You want to check the condition of those fluids uh, for water contamination, especially on the, the trucks, because you don't know, and I, I wouldn't know either without actually checking that there's no water intrusion in those. You want to check those transmissions every 60,000, um, spark plugs, things of that nature, you want to change those on the service interval because I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it where the spark plugs weren't changed on that 60,000 or that 100,000 mile mark and it creates a misfire, uh, a drivability concern. You know, um, some of the manufacturers like to lie and say like their transmissions are like uh, no. lifetime which really we know is not true. There, there's no predetermined lifetime of a vehicle, I would like to say. I mean, um, I, and I really feel like, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the person that's buying the vehicle needs to maintain it as per the uh, dealer claims. But at the same time, use your better judgment. And the, and the other thing is, is, when, when when we get cars that have been maintained, mm -hmm. they have less problems and they la and they we sell them to people and people are happy and they even come back and tell us how great the vehicle is. Or they're bringing their friends. Yeah. So so the same applies. If you own this vehicle and you don't take care of it, it's going to break down on you and you're going to give you problems and, and all kinds of issues. So by having a car and doing this regular maintenance, will make your car last and it'll be there for you. It'll take you where you, where you need to go. It'll be, you can count on it. It'll be a reliable vehicle. So it's detrimental 
that you do the oil change, that you do the service. That is, so, so first you come buy the car, but then second, it's detrimental that you take care of it and you do all the maintenance and, and because then the car is going to take care of you. And, and the other thing is, is I want to say these uh, manufacturer, manufacturers, they say 10 years. I think that's BMW. So when you ch when people when they tell you that you change the B uh, the oil every 10 years, people forget, and then never change the oil. They come in. That's why we get so many BMWs mm. with engine problems because people forget to change the oil. Period. Or even check it. And the check level. it. You can't even check because you can't go in there. Well, you can if you know how to go through the menu and A check process. it. You know. It, it, there, there's a lot of little tricks that you learn along the way. I would say that for sure. And, uh, you know, although we do know those tricks, it's nice to be able to explain to others, but it's kind of situational as per different vehicles require certain things. You know, like uh, I, it bothers me that, that most manufacturers have done away with the dipstick for the oil and uh, the transmission fluid because... Uh, by incorporating that into a way that, you know, uh, you would have to have the vehicle on a lift to check. Really, is it dissatisfying? Uh, but that's uh, the manufacturers taking away that, That's your, their choice. They, they want to make money off of you, so that way you have to take it to, um, a, to make it difficult for you like to do a, Like a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a built-in redundancy or... You know, and, and that's kind of where they want you. They want you buying that new car, you know, in five years. They want yeah. you to, it's like an iPhone, you know. Every year they're coming out with the yeah. the, new the new old new, iPhone. Yeah, yeah. It's the same phone usually. Same But phone. a little little yeah. different case, a little different this. And yeah. pay pay again. And, uh, but, uh, but, the, but the cars are getting more complicated all the time. Absolutely. And more advanced and with batteries and computers and. Yeah. And each one has its own issues and quirks, and it, it, Billy, I, I don't, I think you're really <laughs> gifted because you are, you're an encyclopedia to every manufacturer, every car, and it's all in your head. On well, average, on average, that's. Uh, yeah. And um, I, I've been in this industry for the better part of 15 years now, and uh, I've always been a car enthusiast like yourself. Yeah, um, I love cars. I started out, um, I used to pay my uncle to fix my cars, believe it or not. I was okay. a, uh, a tree trimmer and, uh, you know, given access to people's yards, I'd always find vehicles that either had been sitting down for a while or for a long time. And I would purchase these vehicles and, uh, you know, get them running. And that's what really started my, my, uh, you know, desire to cars. even fix cars is just the the access that I had to, uh, you know, cars that were neglected, you know, I, I got some sense of enjoyment by bringing putting them back, back on the road, you know, life. and you still do whenever, sometimes I get these cars that haven't ran. I've had a few that haven't ran in 10 years. I'm the worst. And you go, you can't wait to get them started. You can't wait to get bring, them running. Bring them back to life like uh, Frankenstein. The, the Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. It hadn't ran Cougar. since what, 93. Yeah. So that was 20 years, 30 years it didn't run. 30 years it sat down yeah, and, uh, and we, we got had a, it running. We got a Cougar next. Yeah, the 71 ran, Cougar convertible. It ran in 10 years. Yeah, so we gotta get can't that, wait. Get that going. Well, Billy, so uh, I think uh, that's coming to our, our video is coming to an end. And uh, this was our first one. I really enjoyed do, uh, doing that with you. I think we're going to do one a week. One, no, not one a week. One a month. <laughs> All right, well, um, like I said, I'm Billy. I work for Victory Auto Group, and uh, it's a pleasure working for this man, and I can't wait to be able to give you guys some more information. And uh, I know we were kind of talking about an idea of maybe even doing uh, a call-in service. I don't know if that's possible. I don't think it's possible. It would be amazing. Uh, either way, uh, send us a couple of questions, you know, uh, if there's something you feel we didn't cover in this video, uh, we'll take your notes and we'll make sure to address it in the next one. Thank you for having me, sir. Thank you, Billy. Appreciate it.